we are moving to the last one, that is the introduction of, of the Department of Civil Engineering at Yokohama National University. And we have a Professor Osoda, Professor Suzuki, and Professor Kikumoto. But I'm afraid none of them is not available today for these events. So you can please send your question to the QA box to in, the, in our QA box by regarding the but when you watch the movie and we have a QR code you can scan for asking your question. So I really would like to thank you for watching the, the next video. Thank you very much. Let's move to the next one. Hello everyone. My name is Rao Wei. I am an international student from China, currently studying at the Graduate School of International Social Sciences. Today, I'm going to interview some professors from the Department of Civil Engineering. Let's go! Today, we are going to have an interview with Professor Kikumoto, and we're going to ask him about something studying in the Department of Civil Engineering. So, Professor Kikumoto, what do the students study in the Department of Civil Engineering? So first of all, welcome to our Department of Civil Engineering. Uh, our students are learning everything about infrastructures. Um, infrastructure is public buildings, uh, public transportation such as roads and railways, uh, ports and airports, rivers, uh, dams, lifelines, uh, uh, for example, gas, water supply, sewage system, and communication networks. So the bridges and um, uh, tunnels are also included in the infrastructure. And uh, everything about the infrastructure, so the everything uh, means the entire process of the uh, planning, uh, design, construction, operation, and maintenance. So the, our students are uh, learning uh, mathematics, mechanics, and major subjects um, related to civil engineering related with uh, infrastructures. Uh, for example, for design process, students are surveying uh, project management to decide where, what kind of infrastructure we need. Uh, for design and construction, uh, students learn uh, mathematics and mechanics uh, to achieve safe and durable infrastructures. And finally, for the maintenance process, students learn uh, material science to maintain the infrastructure for the more extended period. Sounds like a very important subject about also like uh, kind of difficult. Uh, thank you. Um, how many uh, international students are studying in the Graduate School of Urban Innovation and the Department of Civil Engineering? So our program are mainly consisting of the uh, undergraduate and uh, graduate study programs. Uh, undergraduate program is held in the Department of Urban Infrastructure, uh, the Faculty of Urban Science. And our graduate program is held in the Department of Urban Society at the Graduate School of Urban Innovation. And uh, uh, for the undergraduate course, um, about 50 students enroll every year. And uh, about 15 to 20% of the students are uh, international students. And since undergraduate courses are given in fully given in uh, Japanese, so uh, you will need to have some Japanese language proficiency. And uh, undergraduate students, um, international students, usually comes from uh, China, uh, South Korea, uh, Mongolia, Vietnam and Cambodia. And uh, graduate study program, including uh, lectures and research supervisions, are all given in English. And uh, graduate school has three years master's course and three years doctoral program. And um, around 150 students are studying in our department at this moment. And about 60% of them are international students. So therefore, the uh, graduate students, uh, the graduate school, are uh, very international and multicultural, cultural environments. And uh, many of the students are from different countries, um, such as China, uh, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia, Myanmar, Thailand, uh, Bangladesh, Philippines, and other uh, Asian countries. And several students are come from several countries from Africa, uh, South America, and Europe. Thank you. So for these international students, how can they enter this department and you know the graduate school of uh, urban innovation? Uh, well, um, to study civil engineering at the undergraduate level, 
uh, you will need to take an exam for international students called YJEP. Uh, YJEP is an abbreviation of the Yokohama Global Education Program, and there are two types of the exam. Uh, YJEP M1 is for international students and who are already in Japan, and another type of the exam is YJEP M2. Uh, this exam is for international students in their home country. So uh, you can take the YJEP M2 exam without coming to Japan. And uh, at the graduate school level, uh, entrance, entrance exam uh, are conducted twice a year. Uh, there are uh, some privately funded international students, but uh, many of the students in our departments are supported by uh, public uh, scholarship from Japanese Ministry of Education, JICA and other organizations. And uh, there are also scholarships specially allocated for our department. So the, um, our uh, system of uh, accepting the uh, ambitious and uh, intelligent students are uh, very well established. Um, could you please tell us about the research topics in the Department of Civil Engineering? So, um, as I explained, that uh, civil engineering deals with the extensive range of the subjects and processes. So, uh, but uh, it can be broadly divided into five research fields. Um, for example, the research field related with structure, such as bridges. Uh, research field related with uh, water, such as um, seas and rivers. And the field related with ground, um, that supports the older civil engineering infrastructures. And uh, research field related with city planning and transportation. And um, also the, uh, there is the uh, research field related with the uh, engineering materials, such as concrete. And I'm actually working in the field of geotechnical engineering and trying to explore the uh, uh, countermeasures for the uh, uh, natural disasters such as uh, earthquakes and gravity. Uh, today, um, I would like to introduce two of my colleagues. Um, the first is Professor Hosoda Akira. Uh, he conducts very practical research in the field of concrete engineering and is doing the research that is directly useful to the society. And the second is Professor Takayuki Suzuki. Uh, he is actively doing the research in hydraulic engineering, especially in uh, coastal research, uh, both in Japan and abroad. But I hope you will enjoy the research. So here is Professor Hosoda's laboratory. Let's go inside of it. Hello everyone, my name is Akira Hosoda. I am a researcher and engineer in the field of concrete engineering. From now on, I will introduce my research activities. I am a researcher in the field of civil engineering. <coughs> in this stamp published by JSC, you can find many kinds of infrastructure supporting a life and a society, such as dam, disaster prevention facilities, water power plant, airport and seaport, bridges, channels, railways, etc. The objective of civil engineering is to build a better life and better society. I am the specialist in the field of concrete engineering. Concrete is used a lot for building infrastructure. What is concrete? Concrete is the second most consumed material in the world after water. Concrete is made by mixing cement. Cement is mainly CaO derived from CaCO3 and sand, stone, and water and chemical mixture. Here you can find uh, several keywords for concrete engineering. It's natural material. Any shape can be made by concrete. We can pursue low carbon society. 
high strength material is instant intensively uh, investigated. We can investigate utilization of industrial waste, long life of infrastructure is very important, and maintenance for existing structures are also very important. This is one of the examples of long life bridge. And this is one of my research topics, zero cement concrete, only by wastes and seawater. There are many kinds of research topics about concrete. For example, uh, technology to achieve long life and safe concrete structures are very important. We have to uh, prevent uh, very severe corrosion of bridge and also we have to prevent severe earthquake damage, especially in Japan. And as you can imagine easily, in Japan, there are hot and cold weathers and there are big cities and local areas. So not only prevent uh, inventing technology, but we have to implement that technology to social system. And of course, we use numerical simulation uh, to predict the failure of country structures. And I'm involved in uh, many kinds of technology development. This is one of the examples uh, of the tunnel uh, construction new system. So uh, if you're interested, uh, please do not hesitate to join us. Thank you for listening. Professor Suzuki's wave lab. Let's go inside a bit. Hi, thank you. In our department, we have two rooms in our laboratory. One is this side. We are now making a, a regular wave. This is also used for, not only for the research work, but also for the uh, laboratory classes in a third year student. And this side is also using for the research work. And now we are drawing to the uh, sediment uh, layers here. We try to change the compaction of the sediment, and then uh, we make a wave, and then uh, we are trying to check how the sediment suspension will change depending on the uh, sediment layer. From now, I'm going to introduce my research topics. I belong to Australian Coastal Engineering Laboratory, and then the, most of the uh, research topics can separate the two groups. One is prevent people and the land from natural disasters. It includes the sediment transport, or uh, near shore waves, near shore currents, and then uh, disaster prevention topics. And the other is the restoration of environmental quality of coastal area, bay, and lakes. This includes the uh, improving of the water quality in the coastal areas or development of the environment protection restoration technologies. And in our laboratory, uh, we are doing the laboratory, not only the laboratory experiments or field survey, but also numerical simulation or satellite image analysis. Uh, this is the keywords of my research topic. I mean, my major is that the near shore dynamics, it includes the sediment transport, beach profile change, or vertical mixing. And then the, not only the, this kind of sediment works, but also the current and the wave force. So uh, when I'm, most of the research topics that I'm doing is related to this near shore dynamics. But not only this uh, topic, but I'm also doing the, the storm surge and then the tsunami risk uh, topics. It includes the, the scar due to the tsunami or the tsunami hazard map improvement. Now one more research topic is that the coastal environment. It includes the coastal sand or shore management. 
I'll show some the example of the, what I'm doing now. And one is that this is a cement movement and vertical mixing in the regions from the Swash zone to the far offshore zone. Uh, we have some one question that uh, we can observe that this kind of profile, but uh, it is very hard to understand how the sediment move from near shore to offshore or offshore to near shore. In this experiment, we install the uh, fluorescence sound in the coast and then take uh, this kind of core sample and then doing the analysis and then we find out how the sediment will move in the near shore area. And finally, we find that uh, if there is ki this kind of outer bar that existed, this outer bar will separate the sediment motion in the near shore area and an offshore area. So uh, from now, we are going to consider how this outer bar shape will affect the sediment movement. So the other example is that uh, a wave height estimation. To consider the wave force or the uh, storm surge effect to the coastline is uh, very important to con to estimate the wave height because the wave height is uh, equal is correlated to the wave force. So uh, this this topic we try to find out the wave height using wave sound, which can uh, observe the data at the on online like this one here. So this is the results of the uh, what we uh, estimate from the wave sound. So this black line is that observed. Uh, this is the wave height, but uh, from other lines are uh, estimated from the wave sound. So here there are some uh, discrepancy, but uh, fairly we can estimate the wave height using wave co uh, wave sound. But this uh, technique is only using this Hazaki course, and from now I try to uh, apply this technique to the other course. Coastal problem is not occurred in Japan, but also in the world. This is an example of the joint project with ITB in Indonesia. In the Indonesia of the Subang that is about 100 km from Jakarta, this area had a big erosion area called this area here. Because of the flood, government tried to move the sediment uh, different direction to this way, and then the large you know, deposition occurred at the river about here. And then the, the ratio of the deposition and erosion is rapidly increasing on both sides. And then one, one possibility is that we make a new channel for this eroded area and then more, uh, make more deposition at this area. But uh, this is not starting yet, but uh, this, this kind of issue need to consider by ourselves. So this is one of the examples that this is a research project in Thailand. In the Thailand, there had a lot of uh, beach erosion problems had a big issue in the coastline, especially in the Gulf of the, uh, Thai, Thailand. And then uh, lots of area uh, covered by the, this kind of bamboo site. And then also the bamboo site, also the other area is uh, covered by this kind of revetment. But uh, we could not understand that how the bamboo site will reduce the wave height. So this is an example of the, how the wave reduced, uh, reduced due to this bamboo fence. So here you can see that the blue line is offshore, and then the red to blue is the near shore side. You can see that the uh, the waves are reduced about 40% by this uh, bamboo fence. So my research topic is also mostly related to the, this near shore zone from the swash zone to offshore zone. This area is a high, highly sediment transport is moving, and then if you are interested in this kind of sediment transport, wave force in the near shore current, or other uh, research uh, disaster prevention due to the uh, coastal matter, uh, please come to my lab and then uh, let's do the study and research work together. Thank you very much.